Hello everybody, um, I'm here today to demo my arithmetic and logic unit, or ALU. Uh, it's very, very simple. There's a lot it can't do. Um, but what it can do is, you know, it's all I need for what, I, what I'm working on. It can do addition, it can do subtraction, it can do uh, logical right shift by one bit, uh, which is division by two. Um, and it can also, it, it can also, of course, do, you know, unit units of all those features, so inversion and increment um, and those sorts of things. But real quick, a demo. So I've got right now, you, you can see here on the bottom, I've got plugged in here is 3. And then here I've got plugged in 18, if you can, you can see those lamps. Um, and then the output here you can see is 21. So that's 18 plus 3, that's what we'd expect. Um, right here, this, this input you'll notice is connected to a bunch of latches. Um, which are connected to the output. When I push this button, uh, just like in the previous ALU design, if you watch that video, when I push this button, the output gets latched in uh, to, to, to the accumulator here, which is then fed back in as the main input. Uh, so I'll do that real quick. So what will happen is now this input will become uh, 21. Uh, this input will stay fixed to 3 because that's coming from uh, down there. And then we should get 24, which is 1, 1. Uh, zero zero zero. So let's do that. Amazing. We got twenty four, just like we expected. Uh, let's try it again. We should get twenty seven. All right, one more time, just for, just for fun. There we go. Nifty. That's thirty, I believe. Right, fifteen times two, so that's thirty. Um, pretty neat. Uh, it does work for addition, so it also works for subtraction. So if you flick this. Uh, flip this off, so that basically inverts the bits. You can see here we got the inverse of 3 being fed in. And then this unit here increments by 1. Uh, if, you're if you're familiar, that performs 2's complement addition, where which is the simpler of 2's complement versus 1 complement because it allows you to just add a negated version like you would a not negated version to get subtraction. So as you can see here, we have 27 in the accumulator plus our negative 3, which you can see is, is all 1's, 0, 1. So 27 plus negative 3, that gets us 21. Nifty. Through the end, we should get, uh, what's that? Okay. 20, why well, is 24, sorry. Then we should get 21 to do this. We do. And then we should get, what's that? 18. 15, right? So it works. Um, also, as a second demo, what I want to do, just to demonstrate that this is instant, uh, I'm going to force all these latches to one real quick. Um, or all except the last one. Let's do all except the last two. So here we're adding, I think it's a 63. Um, I'm going to swing down here. I'm just going to plug in. I have this nifty little setup. So if I make this zero, and I don't invert. So now I've got the increment unit. Uh, and I'm going to toggle the input on the increment between 1 and 0. So what we get, if you'll notice here if you look at these lamps, this input's flickering between 8 or between 1 and 0. 1 and 0. Uh, very quickly, and it's being added to 63. And you can see that the output updates just about instantly. Uh, this is what we'd hope. You'll notice you'll notice the update delay is right on a chunk boundary, right? You can see my chunk boundary divider right through the middle there, uh, which is good. Uh, I would like to kind of I would like to download a copy of this uh, locally uh, to see if that you know fixes that lag or helps that lag. Uh, I don't really know all the details of how the renderer works and how updates are, you know, sent or whatever, but uh, but I'm sure a lot of this lag you see here is just because of the server sending updates for different chunks at different times, uh, which, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, we can verify it. it's working uh, instantly. I'm just going to uh, clear all these real quick.
So a neat way to verify that this logic is all instant. Um, I'm a big fan of. So I have. I'm going to let's see. I'm inverting all the bits. So you can see I'm sending all ones in. Right. Um, sending all ones in, and I'm doing all ones is negative one basically. So negative one plus one plus zero plus one plus zero. So that's toggling this. Uh, that's toggling this output from all ones to all zeros, all ones to all zeros. And that, because of this ripple carry architecture for the converter, you can see the carries are sent over this way. Um, down here we have a piston. This piston extends when the when the last carry input comes out, and this piston extends when this row of repeaters. I have eight repeaters with a one tick delay between them, or delay between them. Uh, so you can see that this bottom piston extends before the top piston does. Which means that the delay, um, the delay between units is less than one tick, right? Let me turn, to turn this off to the delay. So that means that the delay between units is less than one tick, right? Because if, if the carries propagate through, if the carries ripple through and get here, faster than these um, these units here get over here uh, which these are all one tick repeaters then that means that the delay within a single unit is less than one tick so oh, here. yeah you can see how that drop happens by all these repeaters if it's stuck so as you can see that it is indeed instant it, and this is all built I actually, I had um, a couple instant repeaters in places. I used to have instant repeaters here, but as you can see, I replaced those with not instant repeaters. Um, just because this, that's a constant gate delay, I'm good with that. I also replaced these, this carry. You can see this, this carry has to come from this block, has to go up and then all the way back down and then around. Let's go here, it has to go all the way down and around through here. And then up, 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 up to this inverter up here. That's a really long, that's a, a long distance. So you're going to need necessarily a repeater along that path. I tried many times routing this uh, input through here and, and all around here and getting it over to that uh, to that inverter more quickly. But uh, it turned out to pretty much be impossible. Everything is way too close. So I just sent it through the bottom. I sent. I, I was originally sending it through a insert repeater, uh, the the insta drop one that I've been using, and those kept getting stuck because of this simultaneous update problem that I, I you know, won't explain. Um, but those kept getting stuck, which is really obnoxious, and so I replaced it with these two inverters because these don't rely on drops; they rely on this, they rely on this um, instant dust cut and this instant you know just typical piston weirdness. So as long as the input is uh, stable for the most part they shouldn't get stuck so that's why I've got here a seemingly useless um, inverter inverter pair that functions as, as an instant repeater which is neat um, there are other repeater designs that I haven't experimented with that don't rely on the instant drop bug uh, I may try those those might work better um, those might also work better up here too because these are pretty fragile as well that's why this has to be a fourth tick repeater, and I think if I use a one tick repeater, oh, this is gonna break when I get this. Okay, if I use one tick repeater, you see they get stuck, which is lame. Uh, don't like that. So I have to make even even a two tick repeater will get stuck. Uh, let me get that stuck again. Which is nif. Oh, I mean that that can be useful if you want to go for a clock divider. You'll notice that this these pulses are now. Uh, dividing that clock signal, so it functions like a T flip flop, I guess, or like a T latch. But even three gets stuck, right? Three gets stuck. And it's the most obnoxious thing in the world. So I have to make this four because these guys are little babies. So push the button again. Now, now you see it doesn't get stuck, which is fine. Um, but the problem with that is now that means that four, four, you know, very long ticks. This guy's down. This latch, this latch is now loading the value of whatever is coming in here. 
for four ticks. That means the time that this from the time that this is updated to the time that this propagates all the way through should be four ticks or more. Uh, if I want to, you know, if I want a consistent design, a stable design, uh, and that's a bit unfortunate because. Uh, we would like for this to be, you know, a one tick adder. And it's just not so. But anyway, that's my uh, that's my LU. Um, I like the really organic design to it. You can see up here, I've got a single unit duplicate up here in the air. Uh, you can see this really neat organic design to it because, you know, because these inverters, you know, when you optimize them uh, to only use blocks you need, they have this nice kind of round shape to them. Right? You can see they kind of have a nice. Well, these these aren't optimizing. Knock these blocks out. Kind of a nice little round shape to them. They also the input is one block lower than the output, um, and then of course these angled lines for sending redstone around. These swirly bits for sending redstone down. Uh, you got a nice kind of organic look to it when you're when you're you know crunching everything together. So that's my uh, that's my instant ALU design. Uh, pretty neat looking thing. Um, thanks for watching.